Hey, what's up, everybody? I wanted to share a little bit about what I've been learning this week. And and the Lord, he's, he's impressed upon me to study out meekness. Like, what is meek? What are the meek? Who are the meek? How does one become meek? What does it even mean? Right? Because in our culture, at least what I've been taught, is that meekness is almost like this passive, docile, huge, like almost a, some people say humble, right? Gentle is a good word for it. Um, I think a meek person is also humble, but they're not synonymous completely um, because humility, uh, it, it requires humility to become meek, um, but meek is powerful. And so, I, I'm just going to share a few scriptures that, that the Lord's given me to, to consider this week. Matthew 11, 29 says, this is Jesus. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. So like, here's the Savior himself saying, I am meek and lowly of heart. So what does that mean? The Apostle Paul, um, he tells us in uh, the, the servant this is 2 Timothy uh, 2.24. The servant of the Lord must not strive or contend or argue or be bitterly engaged in proving points, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Right, Not being overbearing, um, but being confidently persuasive. Um, to teach those people who, I mean, who do you know who gets in their own way? You know, I get in my own way. Um, I think we all do, right? King David says, The meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The Lord himself said in the Beatitudes the same thing. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Zephaniah 2.3 Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. Who are the meek? And then first Peter, oh, I love this one. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is the spirit of God, or which is in the sight of God of great price. Okay, so the, the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, like an ornament, that's something that adorns us, right? That's something that beautifies us. That's a a beautiful addition to to whatever it is that is being uh, decorated. So decorate yourselves with meekness. I like that. And then I like this scripture in Isaiah, Isaiah 61. The Lord himself quotes this in the synagogue. Um, when when he uh, when he goes in the synagogue, he opens the scroll of Isaiah and he, he reads this. And he says, in me today, this is fulfilled. And, and he ticks a lot of people off. But anyway, I love the scripture itself. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. It sounds kind of like what Paul was saying, right? Like the servant of the Lord is to, to, to teach in meekness those that appoint them or that oppose themselves. To me, that's the opening of the prison to them that are bound. We, what are we bound by? But our thoughts and our emotions, right? Um, so it's cool. The Lord says, preach good tidings unto the meek. Again, who are the meek? And uh, here's, a, here's a really cool prophetic word. And the remission of sins or the recognition of the grace of God that has redeemed us in the acceptance of this gift of salvation and grace brings meekness. So accepting the Lord's gift, applying the blood of his sacrifice into our life and, and accepting the sanctification therein. And by lowliness of heart comes the visitation of the Holy Ghost, which comforter fills with hope and perfect love. So the remission of sins brings meekness. And then here's another one. The Lord says, learn of me and listen to my words. Walk in the meekness of my spirit and you shall have peace in me. What does that mean? Walk in the meekness of my spirit. Like the Lord was no weenie. You know, he wasn't like this wuss, this, this passive guy that just kind of, you know, 
didn't pay attention to what was going on. He walked in power and authority confidently. Paul tells us to, 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 to come boldly before the throne of God, right? And so I believe that's meekness, that bold, powerful confidence um, that's just so beautiful. The Lord, he gave me uh, an awesome vision last uh, this last year, and I actually have it. I'm not going to share the vision with you. Um, today, but I'm going to share like the takeaway. As I walk in the holy light of Christ, it's like I'm a walking lightning bolt, but I'm not erratic, but rather intentional, never revealing or boasting of the power that is within me in Christ, only using it to glorify him and to do his will. Right? So we have this beautiful power inside of us, faith, right? And that confidence that comes by way of, of exercising our faith. We learn that the Lord's promises are sure. And as we gain that, 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 that beautiful assurance of the Lord's presence and um, influence in our lives and in our days. And we don't boast about it. We simply use it to glorify him and to lift others think that's meekness, right? So the word meekness actually comes from the Greek word praus, right? And so that's the word that the Lord would have used back in, in, in his times is praus. P-R-A-U-S is, is, is how it's spelled. Praus, um, at least in English. And what that means is tamed by kindness or made reasonable through suffering, taught to become to be taken from a state of wild rebellion and made completely loyal to and dependent on one's master. So in those days, the days of the Lord, actually hundreds of years before the Lord, um, the word comes from a process that they used to put horses through, right? So they would go up into the mountains, the Greeks, they would go up into the mountains and they would get all these powerful wild stallions and they would they would bring them down to tame them to break them and some were made to be like uh would pull wagons and stuff and others would be like racehorses but the best of the best the most powerful and spirited uh horses would become war horses they'd be trained to be warriors right and so you have this powerful fearless beast this wild stallion that's not scared of arrows will run into the fire and jump through everything and just like charge into battle, fearless, powerful creatures. Right. Um, but when they have become meeked, that means that, you know, whoever the rider is, whoever their master is, could be on that horse and that horse could be charging at 40 miles an hour. And then with just a gentle nudge of the foot, or just a simple whisper into the horse's ear. And that horse would go from charging at 40 miles an hour to coming to a sliding halt because of its disciplined restraint, right? It's, it, it, it learned to overcome the brute beast that it is, but it doesn't take away from the powerful beast that it is. And we too have all of these appetites and all of these desires and these things that motivate us um, to do to do whatever we have triggers, we have motivations, and 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 all of these things that have shaped our experience up until now. And so, what I believe meekness is is learning how to overcome the flesh through the spirit, but not to be boastful or arrogant about it, and not to be like, look at me. I'm so meek, I'm so powerful, right? The Lord is with me, I'm favored, I'm righteous. Like that's not meekness, that's pride. And so I think because pride is like an opposite of meekness, people confuse meekness with humility, at least I did for a long time. But meekness is actually like that, that faith-based assurance of God's power within us. Right. The faith that we can look at a mountain and say, be removed. And it would be 
And we wouldn't do it just to showboat our spiritual gifts or our powers, but we would do it to glorify God, right? Meekness. Um, I'm going to share with you just one more prophetic word or scripture um, to tie this all together. This is an admonition to a father. A father was telling his son before he went out to be a missionary. He said, preach unto them repentance and faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Teach them to humble themselves and to be meek and lowly in heart. Teach them to withstand every temptation of the devil with their faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing more powerful in this world, my friends, than faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said that in these days, there will be those who will do greater works than he did. It's not going to be proud, arrogant people who, who do those works. It will be the meek and the humble and the lowly of heart, the broken hearted, right? Those who have had their spirits broken like those wild stallions that the Greeks brought down from the mountain to turn into warriors. The Lord has taken us, he's taking us. We are like those wild stallions and, and he's brought us through a ton of experience that break us, right? And that and that enable us to learn how to rely on and depend on his guidance. The promptings of the Holy Spirit are like that rider that sits on that horse that has been meekened and, and tells it to stop or to go or to move this way or to jump, right? And, and so as we become one with the Lord through the Holy Spirit, we become meek. And this is so powerful and what a gift it is to have so much power within us, but rather than use that power for our own gain or to impress people, we can simply choose to give that gift to others, to share our faith with others so that they too can become meek and lowly of heart and have their hearts and their spirits healed by the great physician, our Lord and Savior. I hope that you found value in this message. I love you so much and I pray for you to have an experience with the Lord that is just phenomenal. I pray that he wraps you up in his Holy Spirit and gives you comfort and peace and love and, 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 and that you receive that love. Peace be with you, my friends.